All right, well, as we turn our attention back to what's happening with Ukraine and Russia, the United Nations Emergency Relief Coordinator coordinator reminded the public that three million Ukrainians were already in need of humanitarian assistance from the eight-year-long conflict in eastern Ukraine. Now, with the ongoing Russian invasion, more concerns as thousands flee to safety. Joining me now to discuss humanitarian efforts in Ukraine is Bethany Frankel, philanthropist and entrepreneur. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, you Thanks established the beast. Yes. Now, you established the Be Strong Disaster Relief Initiative in partnership with the Global Empowerment Mission. Now, the team is currently set up in the southeast Polish border with Ukraine. What are you hearing from your team on the ground right now about the key needs for people in Ukraine right now? There are multiple things going on at the same time. There are refugees fleeing that would like to stay in Poland. They sort of feel that they're in limbo and need supplies and help and lodging. In Poland, there are other people who have left and gone to uh, relatives and friends throughout Europe. Uh, we have a warehouse secured and a place to receive aid because aid is now coming from Europe from larger companies like Goya, so we can distribute aid. One of the other issues happening is Ukraine. The people in Ukraine are running out of food and medical supplies and just an hour ago, we had a very large request for protective gear civilians that want to protect themselves. So we're going in several different directions with to meet different types of needs. But a big, big urgency is now back in Ukraine where supplies are limited. And that's more challenging trucking back into the country. I mean, I can imagine. I mean, so then how much has the initiative raised so far? And how would the funding needs then changing, as you mentioned, with all these developing situations so quickly? The key to be strong is transparency at all times. In the beginning, we always say, this is what we would like to do. We never intended to raise this much money. We, 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 we can have the capability to raise $100 million and execute 100% going to the effort. But we were surprised that by tonight, we'll be at $5 million in donations from the average American. These are $50 donations that could, could get someone a plane ticket to see their family and friends or to go relocate. Separately, the $10 million in aid initially discussed was from our warehouse in Miami, where we have $16 million in aid, and this is 100,000 survival kits. So as, as a crisis evolves, the needs evolve also. When we were doing the PPE crisis, it started with crisis kits. It evolved into PPE masks and hazmat suits. In this case, we started with 100,000 crisis kits, and it has now evolved to travel logistics local uh, in Poland to help people relocate to a warehouse locally, to house aid, to trucking and pallets to then distribute aid, and, and to booths to give people their individual hygiene needs, baby needs, what whatever those needs are when they cross. And then now the most the most recent development is people wanting protective gear, but right before that was us realizing we had to go back into Ukraine with aid because supermarkets have run out of food and medical and, and medical supplies. So there are many different things going on, and that's the thing about Be Strong. It's not a pamphlet five days ago that can describe what we're doing. It's moving every single day to where the need is, and that's what we do specifically and efficiently. And as you mentioned, you started with the initiative committing to that $10 million in aid distribution via 40 containers to, and you're saying if possible, if it ends up being a mass exodus, that goal could be ramped up to 100 containers. How are you able to ramp, so, ramp up so quickly? Well, we have an infrastructure in Miami in our warehouse, but what we do when we go to different places all over the world, which we've been to Mexico and Guatemala and Australia, is we have partners, because we've done this so many times, on the ground. We have people right now flying in that speak the language because we need travel logistics and trucking and and um, and logistics in the warehouse to move the aid. So wherever we are, we establish our relationships, our volunteers, we partner, and we function as sort of like a general contractor then executing. Because if you were to bring a hundred people with you and pay for plane tickets and travel and all these things. This is how many of the big orgs, 40 to 60% don't go to the effort. We do not have that. I won't tolerate that. We don't do big events. It's really, really lean and efficient. And, you know, it would be like, you could, you could help find a way to renovate your house yourself, or you could hire 10 other people and middle people to pay them to do it. So we figure out how to do this in the most economical way possible, and we are thoroughly organized and strategic. 
So then, as you mentioned, then you a number of partnerships. You mentioned uh, contributions there from Goya and the refugee camps, which are providing you know so many different needs. They are a temporary solution. So beyond the critically important immediate aid, how does Be Strong then go on to sort of hand that off to some of these longer term needs, the, the longer term people who are going to be sort of taking care of this beyond the emergency needs? Well, that's a great question because camps are a very temporary solution and are not great for infrastructure in Europe. So you really want to get people to where they need to go to. So the travel partners and those logistics are hugely important, the Airbnb type partners to get people temporary and then permanent lodging. You know, travel is a huge thing, plane tickets, train tickets out. That's huge, that logistics. And then partnering, what we did for uh, Hurricane Maria was we amassed aid from all over the country because people hadn't thought the plan through and they didn't know how to get it to Puerto Rico. Remember the situation with the Jones Act? So we were having everyone get their aid to us and then we were distributing it. So that's what we wanna do here too, have people from Europe, big brand partners, bring their aid to us at, at our warehouse in Europe and then we can distribute it via trucking. So there are many different things happening at the same time. Another thing, like I said, protective gear, uh, helmets that civilians want to protect themselves, that's something for us to get back in. So like I said, it's each each pocket has different ways of doing it. People ask about pets. We've seen no pets. Like every, There are so many things that people ask and think. People ask, can they put together clothes you know, to drop it off? And we're dealing with hundreds of thousands of pieces of clothing to be to be distributed. So, and my partners have been, stayed in Haiti 90 trips after the, the earthquake there. So you don't just leave when the headlines fade, you stay and you help them with their infrastructure, with relocation. I mean, this is going to be a several month, the minimum process. Well, incredible efforts there. We, we do appreciate them. I'm sure the people of Ukraine do too. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bethany Frankel there, philanthropist and entrepreneur. Thank you for your time.